Today I want to look at a family of improper limits, but before we do that I want to look at the version of this limit that is typically found in essentially every first semester calculus class. And that's the limit as x goes to infinity of the square root of x squared plus 2x minus 3 minus x. And of course, maybe the exact numbers may vary, but a limit like this is in, like I said, essentially every first semester's calculus class. Where like this, I mean the square root of a quadratic polynomial minus x. So I'd like to go through really quickly how we would evaluate this limit. So I'd probably rationalize the numerator by multiplying by the square root of this stuff plus x over itself. That'll give me something like this. Notice the square root disappears in the numerator. Then I can cancel the x squareds, giving me the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x minus 3 over that square root of stuff plus x. And then notice that the leading terms in the numerator and the denominator are both x to the first terms. I've got this free x to the first here, and then inside of the square root, I've got an x squared which is acting like x to the first. That means my limit can be found just by looking at the leading coefficients. So that'll give me a 2 in the numerator and then a 1 plus 1 in the denominator. So in the end, that's going to simplify to the number 1. But what if we were to look at this more generally, where we have the nth root of an n degree polynomial, where the leading term is just x to the n, just a coefficient of 1 there, minus x. So this is also an indeterminate form of the same type, infinity minus infinity. And perhaps we could rationalize the numerator, but that's a bit trickier. So we're going to take a different approach. So we'll start by factoring an x out of this uh, nth root here. So let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have the limit as x goes to infinity. Like I said, we're going to factor an x out. But factoring an x out means we divide everything inside of this nth root by x to the n. Because factoring an x out is like factoring an x to the n over n out of this whole thing. Anyway, so that's going to leave us with 1 plus a to the n minus 1 over x. So that's from this term. And then plus all the way down to a1 over x to the n minus 1 plus a0 over x to the n. And then we have a minus x. So let's write that like this. Okay, good. But now I'm actually going to do a change of variables for my limit here. That'll make the limiting technique a little bit more apparent. So instead of taking x to infinity, let's replace x with 1 over h and take h to 0. So let's maybe spell that out real quick. So we'll do that in this yellow box. So if we set h equal to 1 over x, notice as x goes to infinity, h goes to 0 from above. Okay, so that's going to leave me with something like this. We have the limit as h goes to 0 from above of 1 over h, because if h is 1 over x, x is 1 over h. But I'll actually factor that out of this whole thing because I've got an x term on both. And then I'll have the nth root of, so that'll just be 1 plus, let's see, a to the n minus 1 times h plus all the way down to a1 times h to the n minus 1 plus a0 times h to the n. And then this is going to be minus the number 1. Okay, good. And now here's where the trick comes in. And I really like this trick. Let's introduce a new function into this setup. So I'm going to set f of x equal to the following function. It will be the nth root of, well, essentially this thing where we've got x's instead of h's. So 1 plus a n minus 1 times x all the way down to a naught times x to the n. So that's my definition of f of x. 
But let's notice that f of zero is simply equal to the number one. That's pretty obvious just by replacing all of the x's with zero. Okay, but notice what do we have here? That turns this limit into the following. We have the limit as h goes to zero, well from above, but I'll drop that. And then I have f of h minus f of zero, where I've replaced that one with f of zero over h. Oh, but now that looks exactly like the limit definition for the derivative of f evaluated at zero. In other words, we have this is f prime of zero. Oh, but now we can just calculate the derivative of f and evaluate that at zero because we know some derivative rules. So let's do that. So let's maybe keep in mind that this nth root is like a one over nth power. And we in fact have to use the chain rule here. So a one over n will come down and then we'll have all of this stuff. One plus a sub n times x plus all the way up to a naught times x to the n. And that'll be one over n minus one by the power rule. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside by the chain rule. So the derivative of the inside will be a n minus one plus two a n minus two times x. That a n minus two is attached to an x squared. I haven't written that there, but that follows from the structure of this thing. And then plus all the way down to a zero times n times x to the n minus one. And then, like I said, we have to evaluate that at x equals zero because this is the derivative at x equals zero. Okay, so let's see what's left over when we evaluate this at x equals zero. And what's nice is a bunch of stuff cancels. So all of this stuff will go to zero once we plug in x equals zero. And then all of this stuff also goes to zero once we plug in x equals zero. So that's gonna leave us with one to some power, but it doesn't matter, one to any power is one. And then we have a to the n minus one times one over n. In other words, we have a to the n minus one over n. Okay, that's cool, we've done it. We found this like general limit. And now let's go back here and check the, to make sure that it works for this example. So if we look here, a sub n minus one, the role of that is being played by two, and then n is being played by two as well because we've got a square root. And the answer should be a sub n minus one over n, in other words, two over two, but that's exactly what we have, two over two, which is one. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, Subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.